Management of Dental Trauma in the Emergency Department by Hans Rosenberg. In this video, we will go over dental fracture classification and treatment. Current guidelines suggest classifying dental fractures by the injured component of the tooth. What will follow now are the classifications and associated emergency department treatments. First, we have the enamel fracture. This is a complete fracture of the enamel without involvement of the dentin. The tooth itself is not tender. Usually, no treatment is needed in the emergency department. However, smoothing of sharp edges can be performed with an emery board if causing mucosal irritation. If the fragment is available, a dentist can bond it to the tooth at a later time. Next, we have enamel dentin fracture. This is a fracture confined to the enamel and dentin with loss of tooth structure but not involving the pulp, hence why it's also considered an uncomplicated crown fracture. The tooth will often be temperature sensitive as a key differentiation to enamel-only fracture. The exposed fracture fragment can be dried and covered with calcium hydroxide composite, with a product like DICAL being the most widely available in an emergency department. You may also use zinc oxide or glass ionomer composite in order to cover the tooth. I will describe covering the exposed fragment with a composite in some detail at the end of this video. Since some emergency departments are not equipped with calcium hydroxide paste, the use of 2-octal cyanoacrylate, i.e. tissue adhesive, has been reported in the literature. I have successfully used this method numerous times at our institution with no significant complications and good pain relief for the patients. Additionally, if the fragment is available, a dentist can bond it to the tooth at a later time. Next, we have enamel dentin pulp fracture, or a complicated fracture due to the involvement of the pulp. This is a fracture as described, which involves the enamel and the dentin with loss of structure involving the pulp. The exposed pulp will be sensitive to temperature stimuli. The treatment for this fracture is actually the same as for the enamel dental, dentin fracture. Next, we have crown root fractures, which can be described as with and without pulp involvement. Fractures that these fractures involve the enamel, dentin, and cementum, and are further classified by the presence or absence of pulp involvement. Furthermore, uncomplicated and complicated fractures can involve the root as well. In the emergency department, these fractures will be clinically indistinguishable if the coronal fragment remains in place. If the coronal, if the coronal fragment is lost, one may distinguish a fracture involving the pulp and root by the visible pink color of the pulp or visible blood. This fracture type will be painful, tender, to palpation, and stimuli. For the treatment, if the coronal fragment is in situ, then stabilizing the tooth segment to the adjacent teeth using a splint is a treatment of choice. Please see instructions on application of a flexible splint in the next video. If the coronal fragment is lost, then proceed as with the previously described enamel dentin fracture treatment. Next, we have a root fracture. Root fractures usually lead to a mobile and displaced coronal tooth fragment if it remains in situ. This fracture type will be painful, tender to palpation, and stimuli. The treatment is the same as for crown root fractures. Next, I want to briefly describe how one would apply calcium hydroxide dental paste. First, ensure that the tooth is dry and appropriate analgesia is provided for the patient. Equal parts of the calcium hydroxide base are mixed with the catalyst on a mixing board and spatula, such as seen in this picture here. The calcium hydroxide paste is, is then added to the coronal surface of the fractured tooth, providing appropriate coverage to all of the exposed dentin and pulp. Here we have an example of one performed in our emergency department by myself. If you would like further instructions on how to apply calcium hydroxide dental paste, I would suggest going to the link seen on this video here. It can be found at thedentalbox.com backslash movies and then look for fractured tooth care. Just have a few small tips for you guys to round out this video. When we're discussing fractures, in all fractures, try to keep the fragment as it can be reattached. Ensure that the fragment is accounted for as well. So you want to make sure that you rule out aspiration or that the fragment could be embedded in the mucosa. Next, risk of pulp necrosis increases the more severe the fracture, i.e. as you go deeper into the tooth, 
especially involving the pulp of the root, the higher the chance of necrosis. Therefore, in these cases, you want to do the appropriate treatment, which is covering the tooth. And then, as the next point discusses, consider providing antibiotics, for example, penicillin V or doxycycline to Pen B allergic patients for fractures involving the root or pulp. And that is all for dental, dental fracture classification and treatment. And we will chat a little bit more about dental avulsions in the next video. Thank you.